are experiencing a brutally cold winter, and if you look after any outdoor cats or community cats, maybe you've wondered if there's anything more you can do to help them get through these cold snaps. With some good information on this, I am pleased to welcome Molly Armas, staff attorney with Alley Cat Allies. Hello, Molly. Hi there. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, we're so excited to uh, talk about this because it has been such a tough winter. Alley Cat Allies has a new release just providing some basic ideas of what you can do if you wanted to help the cats around your neighborhood get through this winter. Uh, it starts with the just simple notion of providing better shelter or shelter to protect them from the cold. Tell us about what you can do. Absolutely. You know, cats are super resilient. They live and thrive outdoors in all kinds of climates. But, you know, when it's this cold, a little extra help can really go a long way. And so, as you mentioned, providing shelters is a wonderful way to do that. You can purchase pre-made ones online or at our website, alleycat.org. We have really helpful step-by-step instructional videos on how to build some yourself with very inexpensive common materials. One of the things we recommend is using straw, again, because it's inexpensive and it repels moisture. And if you do have shelters already or if you're planning on building them, something we think is super important, especially when it snows, is to make sure that all entrances and exits are clear so cats don't get trapped inside and they can freely move in and out. Some of them online are very simple. Even I could do it, but some of them are nice. If you're handy or you're a woodworker, you can do something really cool. Yep. And, mm-hmm. and straw, uh, not hay. Hay will get wet. Exactly. You want straw because it repels moisture. Okay. So now in terms of food and water, it was interesting for me to learn that there's increased need for food in the cold. Tell us about how to help the cats uh, eat and drink. Absolutely. So If you're currently providing food and water or you see a community cat and you're interested in providing water, food and water, we definitely recommend increasing those portions because, you know, when they are trying to stay warm, they're using more energy. So giving them more food allows them to conserve energy and stay warm. You know, we recommend um, if you feed canned or wet food to put it in an insulated container or you can use dry food, which will not freeze. And then when it comes to water, you want to make sure check to check it regularly, and if you can, put it someplace that the sun hits so it doesn't freeze. Now, there are devices to help keep the water from freezing. Absolutely. Um, You can do, what are they called? Oh, heated electric bowls can help that, or using kind of deep bowls rather than wide bowls um, can help prevent freezing as well. Mm. And wet or dry food, does it matter? It doesn't really matter. It's just if you are going to use the canned or wet food, as I said, um, putting it in insulated containers will help prevent it from freezing. Dry food will not freeze. But again, just checking it regularly to make sure everything's okay is very important. Yeah. Now, every winter we are reminded of the special precautions to take when cats are around uh, when it's cold. Uh, such as precautions related to antifreeze or making sure a cat isn't hiding in your wheel well. What are some of those things? You mentioned making sure cats are not hiding in well wheels. You know, I think it starts in probably starting in the fall. We recommend that people, you know, tap the hood of their car because cats might be keeping warm near the engine or under the car. So just checking around, making sure there's no one there. And then, you know, talking about ways to de-ice. So using salt and chemicals to melt snow can be lethal for both dogs and cats if, if it's licked off paws and ingested. So we recommend, you know, sand or um, other pet-friendly de-icers available at most pet stores. Um, And then, as you mentioned, antifreeze, which, again, is very lethal. We do not recommend using that, or if you do use it and you spill it to quickly clean it up, you know, you can switch to a non-lethal version, which is made with propylene glycol. Um, It's less toxic. Yeah. Okay, and so finally, in terms of those who are interested in spaying and neutering community cats or doing TNR. What special concerns are there in winter when it's cold? Sure. So doing trap neuter return, the only humane and effective approach to stabilizing community cat populations, you can continue to do that in the winter. Um, Definitely continue spaying and neutering, but we recommend that you you check your traps frequently and that you have a warm place for pre- and post-surgery for the cat. And then, you know, when you do bring your cats to the vet to be spayed or neutered, just talk to the vet and ask if they could possibly shave a little less hair off. Um, That way the cats stay warmer. (laughs) Oh, that's a great tip. I like that. 
we go into a lot more detail on our website at alleycat.org slash winter weather. You know, if there's anything else you want to follow up on or, you know, I mentioned videos to build shelters and feeding stations, you can check them out there. Molly Armas with Alley Cat Allies. Thank you very much. Great tips. Thank you.